it's proven that it is ground um, groundbreaking. I don't know why I was going to say that. Hi, everybody. Welcome. My name is Lauren. Today, I have an end of the year review for my third grader. I'm going to be sharing what worked for us, what didn't work for us, what I would use again and recommend, and what I would probably change and not recommend. So let's get started. So first we have language arts, and this is going to be a Becca. We used third grade language arts this year. She has used um, a Becca's language arts in the past, and I just feel like it is very, very strong, especially in grammar and in the younger years for phonics. It gives a really good, solid foundation. We have enjoyed this year. The lessons do not take very long. So we do the lesson and then she does about a page in here every single day. It's only one page. Abeka is very spiral, so it gives small snippets that you're working on over and over with lots of review built in. So you're not forgetting what you haven't learned, but they're not also inundating you with new concepts that you are just overwhelmed with. They, they have, for me, I feel like they've cornered the market on um, just teaching grammar and English and I think it's I think it's it's a great curriculum um, So here's an example. They would just do one page a day and then um, You can see here that they do a review. So like oh you learned this today here Just a reminder and they give you some examples as well This also comes with tests and quizzes. Those are totally optional I gave my child the option and of course I knew she would. She chose to do the tests and quizzes. Um, and so we do those. I give her a grade, but it's strictly just for her to see like how she's doing. It's not, I don't like keep grades or anything like that. So this has been working really, really well for us. We are, we love Abeka's language three. It was simple to the point um, and, and it worked really well for us. Next, I have spelling, and this spelling is by Evan Moore. So this spelling gives 30 lessons, so 30 weeks worth of spelling, and every single day there is um, enough activities to last for the week. And then on Friday, uh, there is a spelling test, and she loves traditional spelling. She loves to have a spelling list. She wants to do the activities. And better believe it, Friday, she wants her spelling test. I'll just give an example. Um, so you would have a list. There are only 15 questions, um, sorry, 15 spelling words. And then I just add two extra words. So you write the list, you do the activities. And I really do like this because it just gives a variety of activities. Um, in order to submit the spelling words, there's dictation sentences once a week. And this also, um, even though it is third grade, it does uh, point out, it does keep uh, phonics. So here's an example. Um, you can see here, it's talking about oi, oi, and oi, oi. And so it's just reinforcing those phonics principles. And it does that all throughout the book. Um, so it, it's taking spelling words and incorporating why we spell it that way. Um, so I, this is, I think the teacher guide, um, but it's a teacher edition. And it, the only re difference between the teacher edition and the student edition is that this comes with an answer key. So I just got this for her. It has answers in the back in the back that I actually pulled out so she wouldn't have those and then it comes with a spelling test page and you just make copies of that you want to make sure you're making copies if, if the spelling test is something that you want to do so Evan Moore great company um, I she likes this spelling I will say she got grade three I probably should have gotten her grade four. It is a little bit on the gentler side as far as the words go, the spelling words themselves. There was a lot of words in here that were very, uh, just way too easy for her level in my opinion. And my daughter who is in first grade was having very similar words to her and she it, she's using a different spelling curriculum. Um, but the words were pretty similar as far as 
the challenge, like the the difficulty of the words. So if I were to do Evan more again, I would suggest, especially if your child is a pretty confident speller, going up a level. That's my just my opinion. If they need a little bit more of a relaxed, gentler approach, grade level is probably perfect. If you want to go on evanmore.com, their website shows not just samples of like five or six pages, it will show the entire book. So you can get a really, really good idea of what the words and the difficulty level for all of their words will be. So that was Evan Moore for us. Now we have vocabulary. This is a word a day. This is also by Evan Moore as well. They give you four words to work on a week. They give you the part of speech and then they give you a sentence and then they also give you like, hey, what does it mean to withdraw? And then they ask you to make a sentence out of it. So Mondays, she would do these two only. She'd do the little exercises. Tuesdays, she would do this page and this on Tuesday. Wednesday is when you, the parent, are involved. Um, it's kind of, rev of a review. You give sentences and they have to um, tell what word would best describe, what of their four vocabulary words would best describe that sentence. Or they, um, they give you sentences where you need to correct the word, um, the, where, where a, a sentence in the word would not make sense. So how lucky you are to break your arm. Well, obviously you're not lucky if you break your arm. So you have to change the word lucky to unfortunate. And unfortunate is one of the words. See, they have to pick out the word that doesn't quite fit in the sentence. So I just love that they give a variety of ways to use these vocabulary words. And then on Thursday is a little quiz. And they just... Um, you know, they just quiz over these answers and then they have to write a sentence. I don't grade these, I just make sure she gets them right. So she does these vocabulary words once, um, Monday through Thursday, every day, one lesson. And I think there's 36 weeks worth of material in here. And again, it's Evan Moore. So go on their website, check out the samples, see which words, if you feel like third, you know, whatever grade your child is in, if it is not appropriate, you feel like it's maybe too difficult or too too easy, then you can um, you know adjust accordingly. So I felt third grade was pretty on point. There were some words she a lot of words she knew, some words not so much. Um, I don't know. I might I may have bumped her up a, a grade, but it just it just depends. So for fourth grade, we'll have to see what I'm going to do with that. Um, if I'm going to use this one again, I'm still making some, some decisions on that. So that was Monday through Thursday. I would do, um, vocabulary. Then Fridays, she would do these reading comprehension skill sheets from Abeka. This you just, you know, read a little story and then answer some questions. Now this is a revised version and I like this because it's not just answering questions. Sometimes they have to do activities that um, are coordinating with what they read. So for example, here you go. They have to kind of do a crack the code that coordinates with the story that they just read. So she really loves doing these. I think it's great. She, I know that she has re good reading comprehension skills, but this is just something that's a little bit more formal to kind of really test it and really see um, how she's doing with reading comprehension. And she's doing uh, really great with this. So this is something that I would certainly recommend. It will help eventually one day for, you know, more formal testing purpose. We have handwriting, which was a Becca, writing with purpose. This is level three as well. And this is a handwriting, um, this is penmanship and, and a writing course all together. So this works the first half of the year, they are just working on handwriting. And then about halfway through, it picks up with formal writing. Letters, uh, book reports, she's having to write a play. Um, so it's teaching that writing process. So this looks 
like this. It's unbound because I just, I bought it unbound and then I put it in a binder. She pulls out a sheet every day, does her work, puts it back in the binder. It's just a little bit easier for us to do that. So um, as far as the review on this. <laughs> so I believe that in order to do something well, it takes practice, correct? I mean, that's just how it goes. You have to practice something in order to do it well. I want her to do cursive well, she's gotta practice it. However, it is a little bit long on what they have you copy, in my opinion, for third grade, and maybe it's only because I'm only having one student who thought it was a bit much. So they have you practice some warm-ups, some letters, and then they have you write a, a passage. And then it's mostly like passages, biblical passages. Um, so that would be like one day. Um, and then here's another day. So it's kind of a, you know, a warm-up, trace and practice, copy, and then an, another copy. And this was, um, this was about almost halfway through the year. So that's just kind of an example. For her, it was a bit much to write. She would complain that she would get a sore hand and it was too much. Um, the only reason I would probably not do this, this one again, this specific handwriting, or I would change it up for another child in the future so she's in third grade. Last year it was in second grade. She That is when she started to learn cursive and she loved it. She was excited. She was actually pretty self-taught. I only had to oversee a few letters and make corrections, but otherwise she taught herself. She loved it. It was her favorite subject. She's like, I love cursive, blah, blah, blah. So fast forward to this year where she's having to do these pages in me, in my mind, poor first child. They always have to, you know, bear the brunt of our, our, of our learning experiences too. So I'm like, well, you know what? Abeka's used in Christian schools and, and, uh, they're all doing these pages. So you need to keep up, you know, Ugh. instead of listening to her, I just was so focused on, well, she, everybody else is doing it like this. Like, I know better than that. I know better than that. Why did I make her do that? And eventually it killed her love for cursive. She's like, she doesn't like it. Every time I make her write a sentence in cursive for another subject, not even handwriting, she's like, ah, oh, cursive. Like she gives me a hard time. She, she doesn't like it anymore. And I feel really bad because she went from loving it to hating it. And I think it was just the amount of cursive copy work that she was like forced to do. It just killed it. And it really it breaks my heart that I did that, but you know, you live and you learn. And that's, you know, I didn't know. I didn't know. I sh going back in retrospect, I should have just said, okay, only do half the page. That's fine. You can still practice your cursive. And I feel like she would have been a little bit more, um, she would have just tolerated it a little better, I guess I should say. Abeka's writing instruction. Hmm. Okay. So they do show you things like organizing an idea. Um, there's a topic, there's ideas. Let me give you one that she actually did. <laughs> so there's topics, there's ideas that go uh, with that. And then there are for every, so for this one, she's doing a habitat and then she has to write facts about dolphins habitats, um, their behavior facts about that. So I won't go through all of this. Here's a topic sentence, concluding sentence, and then the paragraph. And um, I'm not going to, like I said, I'm not going to go into all the details of every single type. This was just a, a, a like a type of factual report. And so, um, and it says fish and she did dolphins, which we know aren't fish. I just had to throw that out there. I know dolphins aren't fish, but she just wanted to do dolphins. I was like, okay, go for it. Um, so they do give that. So they don't just say, here, child, write this report. Good luck. You know, they do give instruction. However, I wish personally that Abeka would provide kind of like an example. Like, here's what a third grade paragraph should look like. Because I, I'm like, sometimes find myself grading on like, 
not a college level, but like I'm being a little bit probably harsher than I should be. And that is obviously killing her spirit as well. So I'm trying to back up and be appropriate for her writing. And she has come a long way. She went from hating sentence, even writing a sentence to being able to write a whole page. And I'm very, very, very proud of her. I do personally think she's doing excellent, but I just feel on a Becca's end, the writing instruction could be a little bit stronger. Uh, it's just what I, I think. It's kind of like, help your child form a good sentence. Well, I mean, can you give me an example of a good sentence? And sometimes they do, sometimes they do. And other times it's kind of like, and have them form a good paragraph. And it's like, oh, can I just have a little bit more uh, instruction? <laughs> so that would be my only complaint with them. I. I love a Becca as far as their grammar is concerned. Going forward, I, I personally wouldn't use their writing, uh, especially in, in upper grades, because I just don't think it's strong enough personally. And I'm saying that from experience because I was did a Becca personally from kindergarten through 12th grade. And I know for sure it did not provide me enough strong enough writing background, but it did great for grammar. So anyway, that is grammar. So lastly, we're language arts and it is a Becca's reading program. Now my daughter is an avid reader. She just loves to read. It's just something she was born with. She's just one of those people who absolutely loves to read, read several times a day in her own time. Um, so I asked her last summer, do you want to get these readers from a Becca that go with the third grade program? And I showed her the samples and things like that. And she was like, sure. Yeah, I'll get them. Um, but when it, when it came time to it, she just wasn't really into them. <laughs> she was like, can I just choose the books that I want to read? So I would, I think these books are great. They have, I'll just, as I'm speaking, I'll show you. Um, they, this is a, an abridged version of Pilgrim's Progress, obviously, it's for third graders. Um, these, this is abridged as well. But they have several chapter books, like, you know, novels, Swiss Family Robinsons. And then they also have short stories. So like this was, this is a book of short stories. They have poems, they have a book with plays. Um, so I think if your child is, even if your child is a great reader, I would just maybe consider trying the readers. They just, I didn't force her to do them because I just feel like, she reads so much as it is in second grade. I think she read like 50 books. So I'm like, I'm not just, you're doing enough on your, for your workload. I'm not just going to keep forcing you to read these books if that's not really something that you're interested in. So she didn't, we kind of scrapped those pretty quickly through the year. I had a feeling she was not going to stick with them. I really did, but I got them anyway. Thankfully I did not pay full price. I got them, um, I got them secondhand. I think either on like a Facebook marketplace or a, or eBay, which is where I get, I highly recommend if you get non-consumables like readers, especially from a Becca, which can be very pricey, look for them secondhand. Um, and thankfully I'll be able to resell these. So it's not like I really am going to lose a bunch of money or anything like that. Um, but yeah, they just, <laughs> they didn't work for us and there's nothing wrong with them. I think they're great. Um, it's just individual, right? So All right. So now I have math, which is the good and the beautiful math three she's about to well obviously she's going to finish it this is an end of the year review right um so we love the good and the beautiful math i know that a lot of people have tried it some people think it has too much fluff um i hear that word a lot i don't know. we really love the good and the beautiful math i've used several other math programs and they just did not work for us um, the good and beautiful, I just keep coming back to, it has a very solid foundation. It does not, it uses traditional math. However, it does bring in elements of conceptual math and conceptual math basically just gives the child more math theory and allows them to figure out the same problem through different methods. And what I find that I don't like with traditional math is that all of our brains are not the same and we don't figure out problems the same. And if you teach a child, just memorize eight plus three equals 11, it may not work for them. And I think that is such a 
rampant problem why we have so many children and even adults who say, oh, I struggle with math, I hated math. Just traditional math, you just figure it out and memorize the answer. And there wasn't given the reason of, of like I said, a number sense of, of having these mental math problems and different strategies of figuring out answers. Both of my children have gone through um, uh, the good and the beautiful math and they both have a very strong number sense. They both have great mental math abilities. They're able to figure out problems, not just because they've memorized the answers, but because they are able to break down the numbers and figure it out that way, which I truly believe when they get older and they are faced with more challenging math concepts, that having these number con number sense um, uh, efficiency basically will help them when they face more challenging math concepts. And I am a firm believer in that. I think it's a gift to give your children that when their brains are so young and soaking up the information and they're like little sponges and it, it's easier for them than it is for you know us who are adults to have to relearn this type of thing. But so the good and the beautiful math I think is great. We also, I also supplement with a Becca Math 2. Now she's in third grade. I do a Becca Math 2. The reason I supplement and I don't think it's you know, it may not be necessary for every person and child and family. You know, you have to do what is going to meet your child's need. But for me, I personally think there's nothing wrong with having them do a worksheet. It literally takes five minutes a day. They don't complain. These worksheets are bright and colorful and they don't have, you know, the child doing 75 problems of the same thing. They do three or four problems of one type and then it moves on to the next. So they cover lots and lots and lots. And the reason I like to, um, to do a grade level below is because a Becca is, obviously, if you don't know about a Becca, they, their math is pretty advanced. So I want, I want my children's supplemental math to be a little bit easier. The reason for that is, is, um, is because I just want to reinforce concepts that they've already learned to kind of keep it in their mind. And it also helps in fill in any gaps because no one math curriculum can completely cover all of it. They can't. So just doing, having them work, I'm saying them because I'm talking about both of my children who, who use Abeka as a supplement. Um, having her do the Abeka extra worksheets just gives a little bit more practice and then helps her with these concepts that she may not be as strong with that the good and the beautiful doesn't exactly provide enough review in my opinion. Lastly, I know this seems like a lot of math, but she has been doing her times tables. This is what she's learned this year is her times tables. Do you remember being in school and maybe not, but I remember being in school and we did these times tables till you had them like that. And I think that is so important. If you do not memorize your times multiplication tables, you are just going to struggle when you get to higher math. There's no two ways about it. You are going to struggle. You need to have them down. And I am not, um, let's say, I don't wanna bash myself. I am not your typical like flashcard mom. Let's review these every day. I just, I truly like forget about flashcards and things like that. But for me, it's very, very, very important that my child and my children get multiplication. It just is. I'm not going to mess with that. So third and fourth grade, I think are foundational to get these multiplication facts down. So this is a hundred days of time tests. If you were to get this, I just got this on Amazon. Uh, you don't, if your child freezes up with the thought of being timed, like one of my children does, do not time them. Just give them, give them the, the, the page. Um, if that's something that you might, if that you want to consider and you think that they might need a little bit more help with their multiplication tables. So it is about 60 problems. If that looks overwhelming to a child, cut it in half or have them do every other day. I don't know, just my recommendation is find something that works for you to get these multiplication tables in, whether it is an app, a computer game, um, 
if you do flashcards, oh, great, more power to you, more power to you. Um, this just was gonna work for us and it has helped her so far. And I just wanna point out that the only reason that I did order that multiplication book for her is because how the good and the beautiful works, there is a, uh, you do the lesson and then there's a student worksheet, which was this. So she does the worksheet. And then they have a bonus activity that they do. And most of the time it had to do with multiplication. So it was either playing a game, which she doesn't really love the games, or get, have the musical mo multiplication, which I did not order. So I felt like the good and the beautiful does really enforce multiplication practice. However, the, the ways that they suggested it just didn't really work exactly for her. So that is the only reason I got this extra sheet, was just to make sure that she was getting in that multiplication practice she needed, but in her method of learning. So that's why I just encourage you to find out whatever works for your child. It doesn't have to be this. It doesn't have to be a book. It can be whatever is going to work for your child, but just to make sure that they're getting those facts and that practice in. Can you tell? I think that math you need a strong foundation on. Can you tell? Um, so those are her individual subjects. We do family subjects together. We do Bible, we do history, and we do science together. We do them together as a group. I pick something that is a little bit age appropriate for everybody so that everybody can, um, my children range in age preschool to third grade. My third grader is the oldest. So I have it on probably about a second grade level so that my first grader and third grader are able to pick up the concepts. My preschooler, she's just there for, along for the ride. However, you'd be surprised how much those little preschoolers actually absorb and how much they actually do pay attention to. So that is my third grade review. There's a lot of things I would keep the same in the future. There's some things that I would change. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, please let me know if there is something that you would like to suggest or see more of in in-depth flip through or anything like that, please let me know. I'd love to share that with you as well. Um, I hope you have a great day. I will see you later. Bye. Okay. <coughs> Guys, you have to stop barking. Coco, no bark. So first we have...